where there were torturous meetings held weekly where you were abused psychologically um, and if you hadn't been selling and if you were in a, in a particular what we called farm that didn't produce you were absolutely maligned it was horrible can you imagine angel going up to god and just one time saying no no get another angel to work for you today we're not working but only mortals can do that to god and temporarily appear to get away with it. If Brother Julius was the inspiration to employees of the real estate company and countywide construction, it was his chief apostle, Paul Sweetman, who was the business mastermind. Before he met Julius, Sweetman was a successful New Jersey developer. But while Sweetman's bank accounts swelled, the men doing the back-breaking work at countywide construction were in dire financial situations. It was very difficult. You, you never had enough to live on. You had to put things on charge cards. Uh, when countywide closed down, I was $11,000 in debt. I owed money on taxes. And yet I was a foreman with anywhere from one to four people under me for several years. It was the way the Sweetmans treated their employees that eventually resulted in their only real troubles in the criminal courts. They were having people go on unemployment and they were still working 50 and 60 hours a week in the wintertime. A typical seasonal construction job would end in November when things got really bad. Joanne and Paul would have them go sign up for unemployment and then they'd be back working the next day and all they'd live on was their unemployment check for five months. In 1983, the state of Connecticut charged Paul and Joanne Sweetman with defrauding the state's unemployment compensation fund of more than $40,000 and supervising the filing of fraudulent unemployment claims by employees of countywide construction. The state granted the Sweetman's accelerated rehabilitation with one year probation. They were ordered to pay restitution, and the criminal charges were then erased from the record. The group's financial empire collapsed during the recession of the 1980s. Century 21 revoked its franchise, and countywide construction went under. The group is trying to rebuild. It's a cool fall night, and a small group of people have gathered at the Plainville Public Library, attracted by an ad in a local paper for Bible Talk and a discussion of the unfulfilled prophecies. Bill Rocap recognizes it as an attempt by followers of Brother Julius to recruit new members. It's a ruse. It's a terrible, terrible religious ruse. So Rocap attends the meeting with the intention of making sure the people who are there know exactly what they're getting into. Also attending is New England cable news photographer Steve Miller with a small camera in a book bag. Have you allowed your group to know who you represent? Yes, I represent uh, TAMCO, the Truth Center. In fact, you're a representative of Brother Julius, who proclaims to be the return of Messiah, who is here to judge the world. Absolutely. I am working up to that truth, yes. After the confrontation, Rocap leaves. The meeting goes on for another hour, as the young Bible teacher makes his case to the small crowd that Julius is the Messiah. So shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed, it says. Meaning when he's revealed, it's going to be the same way. Is he revealed? He's not to the whole world at this time, but he's been known by many people. I know scripturally that he's the Lord, that he's returned again. I'm talking about the Messiah, yes, the spirit of Jesus, but the Messiah returned to do a different type of work, which is part of the scripture outline as to what's going to happen in the end times. See, with this limited amount of time, it's hard to get... Others may walk away and chuckle, but the young Bible teacher offers to introduce our photographer to Julius. Can I meet? You can meet him, sure. My experience of 20 years has told me that very intelligent people can be mind controlled. Steve Hassan should know. He is a nationally known expert on cults and the author of Combating Mind Control. He talked to us about Brother Julius. I think he ranks as a full-fledged mind control cult leader. Uh, with delusions of grandeur and exploitation of his followers, I think where, where the other cult leaders uh, have had more notoriety, it's because they were more successful in recruitment. Julius has lost the majority of his followers in recent years, but it's estimated he still has more than 100 in Connecticut, and he's trying to recruit more. Despite everything he's experienced, including the breakup of his own marriage, Bill Rocap still sees his time with Julius as valuable. I truly believe that it was the best religious experience I could have had as a young person, especially someone in, in their 20s. Uh, it was a better one to have left behind. 
But others, including Julius's own daughter, Lorraine, say their experience with this man was a nightmare they'll never forget. There's a power, there's a force you're dealing with. I felt like I had tangled with Satan himself. This is a clearly focused, highly intellectual, powerful, charismatic human being that manipulates people, that uses them and leaves a trail of victims. Is there anything you could tell the people who are watching this about the, these allegations that have come over years and years and years? You will give it a cut like everybody else. For everybody else. I have a second work to do. Same God, same Messiah, different character. You cannot restrict an infinite God who's filled with love but will not put up with man's continuous rebellion. I'm here to close the world in fiery judgments. I am the Lord God.